In this video, I'm going to explain how to charlieplex using RGB LEDs. And that's the technique I used in this shield, which I used in the word clock. To begin with, I'm going to explain a little bit about what RGB LEDs are. This is a normal LED, and this is an RGB LED. An RGB LED works by sharing a common pin. So basically there's a red light, a blue light and a green light that are, in this case, all sharing the common ground pin. And when we draw that, this top LED looks like this, and this bottom LED, which is the RGB LED, looks like this. And then when we want to charlieplex it, we basically just take a regular LED, and we put one going forward and one going backward, and then switch which pin is on, and which, or which one is high and which one is low, and that controls which LED is on. But when you have an RGB LED, it's much more complicated because the ground pins are all connected already in the red, green, and the blue. So in order to figure this out, how to do this, I actually ended up drawing this diagram. And this PCB is actually this diagram laid out this direction. And the numbers of the pins are not exactly the same as you would use on an Arduino. Um, specifically, pin 13 has a light on it already, and um, pin 0 and pin 1 are already being used for RX and TX. So I used other pin combinations, but logically it's the same. So basically, in this graph, the red, green, and blue pins are all the sides that need to get the high voltage and all the common pins need to get low voltage. So I combined them in these rectangles to demonstrate which LED package each group is in, because you can't separate the red light, the green light, and the blue light. They're already packaged in the same LED. Additionally, some of these bars are four long and some of these bars are three long, and that's to represent the pin combinations that won't work. So for example, you can't have one be both high and low because it doesn't work. So you can only use different combinations, so two or three or four. And sometimes that falls in the middle of a LED. So for example, in this one, pin two and pin two don't work. So I have a red, a green, and a blue in this direction. So basically, you have to combine them in these types of groups. And it goes basically this way, where this is four and this is four. So the minimum number of pins you can be using to charlieplex with RGB LEDs is actually four because you have the three that you need to use for high voltage and the one that you need to use for low voltage, meaning four. And then when you want to add more LEDs, you just need to add groups of three pins like this. And so on. So that leaves us with a set of equations to describe which numbers of pins work and how many LEDs we would get when we use that combination of pins. So in order to work, we need to have n minus one divided by three it must be a whole number. And additionally, the number of LEDs is that standard charlieplexing equation divided by three because we can't separate out a single LED from the package of the RGB LEDs. So some examples of this are, if you do four pins, which is this top corner, um, we end up with the equation to work equaling one and the number of LEDs that we would have is four. If we try it with five, it doesn't work because in that case, we have a whole lot of partial LEDs. You could add, I guess, this one. If we do it with six, it really won't work. I mean, you could add this one here. If we add seven, then we end up with a whole lot that work again. 
So the seven, we end up with that whole number being two and the total number of LEDs being 14 and so on and so forth with 10 pins giving you 30 LEDs and 16 giving you the 80 that I have on this shield. The other thing to note when you're working with RGB LEDs or actually Charlie Plexing in general is that because you only have one LED lit up at one time, the more LEDs you use, the dimmer each LED will appear because you have to cycle through each one until they'll stop looking dim and start looking like they're flashing. So it's something to consider that this is just not a functional way of controlling a ton of LEDs. In any case, it's really useful for certain simple projects. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.